Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Lucas here. In this video, I want to walk you through a new uh, release I just put out, which is called Uber GUI. Uh, it's a UI module for Touch Designer, uh, so this is aimed at developers. Uh, this is going to allow you to um, just kind of hit the ground running with a, a front end for custom parameters that uh, is flexible and uh, fully supports all the different settings that uh, custom parameters has. And in addition to that, there's some other cool features I'll talk about here in a moment. So, uh, yeah, let's just dive right in. So, in this little file here, we've got a sample scene uh, with some selectable objects. Over here on the right, we have uh, Uber GUI. On the left, we have a uh, panel comp, right? So, this is showing our custom parameters of these objects. It's the same thing you're seeing over here, actually, but the difference is uh, we're seeing this in a kind of touch designers format so uh, one thing to note right off the bat uh, these objects these custom parameters uh, they are attached to pages and these pages are all caps as you can see here so uh, this is actually important this is how uber GUI knows whether or not a page should be included or excluded if it's all caps it's included if it's mixed or or no caps then it's excluded and the reason for that is uh, simply to give you control over what you show and what you don't without needing any additional uh, data or nodes or preparation to your objects. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do with Uber GUI was uh, remove as much of the extra work and configuration that you might have to do as possible. So uh, all of the configurations either happen through uh, the custom parameters, which I'll show you later, or uh, the custom parameters of the object you're uh, selecting. So in this case we're using the page and the actual string as a parsing technique and that keeps things very uh, very tight, very bundled, and very straightforward. So anyways, uh, continuing onwards, uh, let me go ahead and show you how this works. So if we change a value, uh, you'll see the value of your changes as well. And if we change it over here, uh, it's going to change over here. So uh, basically what I'm showing you there is that Uber GUI is a bi-directional UI system. So uh, you're constantly updating the custom parameters, but the custom parameters are also updating the UI. So it goes both ways. Uh, so you're never going to have to um, deal with like update problems. It's just always going to stay synced up, which is very nice. Uh, but that's, uh, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Additionally, after that, you'll notice that uh, these these fields that we just typed into they have these little sliders going on so uh, what you do with that is you you right click on the field and you just drag left and right and you can actually adjust the uh, the value uh, that way so that's very useful um, some custom parameters actually have the sliders so for example uh, just like in a circle I'll come back to this later uh, the sliders are here uh, but as soon as you have two, three, or four parameters in a row, you don't have that slider anymore. So uh, with this system, you have a slider uh, for every value that can be uh, moved in that manner. So uh, additionally, if you click on the label, you can actually reset that tuple uh, back to its default. Uh, down here, we have a file parameter, uh, which is called texture. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, you're not going to see this open on on the on the screen, but I'm basically I've got a file browser here. It's the basic Touch Designer file browser. Uh, because it's a separate window, you're not seeing it on the screen capture. But anyways, I can pick an image, uh, hit OK, and it's going to load that into here. As you can see, that texture has been applied to my object, and so I've set up my objects this way in the back end. Uh, but the the main point is. Uh, you have you have the same exact functionality even for more custom parameters like this. So, additionally to the right click and drag, uh, you can also hold Shift and scroll. Uh, it's the way you nudge values. So the three main ways you adjust values: you can type it in, uh, you can right click drag, or you can Shift scroll, and that will allow you to nudge past the min and max, uh, assuming you don't have. Uh, your, your value is clamped. So, uh, cool. Additionally, uh, one other great thing about Uber GUI is if you select more than one object, you can actually adjust more than one object at a time. Uh, 
uh, and they will all just take the same value that you applied to the, the, the field. So if I type in 5, they all go to 5. Um, this is pretty useful uh, if you have multiple objects, uh, but if you have objects with different settings like this light and this cube, uh, well, that's also uh, doable. Uh, I can move them both up and down, but I can also adjust the cone angle uh, and it's just going to skip those parameters for the cube because they don't exist. So, uh, very flexible in that sense. Uh, Alright, so let's see here. We've got, we've got the sphere. Let's jump back over here and talk about this for a moment. So, I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but other parameters, uh, pages that don't have all caps, are not included. So, as you can see here, Everything that's under all params is being uh, included here, but this one is being excluded because the name doesn't fit the uh, the filtering. So uh, just keep that in mind. You'll have to name things all caps. Um, and in this page, we actually have a list of every single parameter that exists in Touch Designer, uh, a custom parameter that is. So we have files. Uh, we have uh, all the op. <sighs> Parameters. Uh, we have uh, the tuples. As you can see here, we can uh, adjust them just by rolling, right-clicking, and scrolling. Um, int. We have a menu. So menus are uh, a little bit different. Uh, you can adjust them uh, through this drop-down thing that pops up. You can also right-click and drag. And you can also shift scroll. So there's a lot of ways to adjust menus. And as you can see, this is updating as we go. Um, pulse. These are a little bit different because pulse parameters don't have a state per se. They uh, they simply just trigger some script to happen. So um, uh, this was a little bit odd implementation-wise. But basically, when you right-click on pulse, you see it flash, and then it goes back off. And so uh, that's essentially triggering the pulse. Uh, and you don't really see much else happening because pulse is not a state. So, uh, with red, green, blue, and red, green, blue alpha, we actually have a color picker that pops up, and as you can see, that uh, that works pretty, pretty well. Uh, very useful. Uh, Sops strings. So we have uh, just plain old strings. Type that in. Uh, String menus work the same way as regular menus, as far as Uber GUI is concerned. Uh, tops, toggles, toggles are going to be a little bit different. You hold your right mouse button down, and you scroll left to right, and you just go from zero to one. So that's uh, uh, state control. It's just like a slider. Uh, int slider. Uh, it works the same way as this, actually. Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, Momentary, all you have to do is right click and release, and uh, it works as a momentary button. Pretty self explanatory. Uh, and then Python, I'll come back to that. These are all just basic uh, float sliders with different names, so there's nothing going on there. Uh, so, Python, let's talk about that real quick. Python is a pretty new parameter type. Uh, you can type in, uh, yeah, values. I can type in one. Uh, you can see one, one, one all around. So I can also type in one plus one. Uh, as you can see over here, it's uh, set itself to two. And as I, I lost focus on the field, now we see the actually uh, the actual evaluated expression. Uh, but if I click back in here, we're going to go back to our expression and we're good to go. Uh, if I type in an actual uh, moving expression uh, you can see that we've got that movement over here and if I if I click off of um, that field it's animating over here too so uh, one thing to note if you if you mess up the expression so if I do one plus and I don't finish the expression I hit enter uh, it's actually going to leave it at the last expression it had that was valid, so it's just not going to take. Um, so that's just uh, how that works. And, uh, oh, excuse me. That's pretty much it for the front end uh, experience, but let me go and take you into the back end. Oh, I lied. There's one more thing to show you. Uh, yeah, okay, you're not seeing 
uh, that. So I'm going to have to do this inside the inside the network view. All right, cool. So uh, you can style this as well. So over here, if I go to the Style tab, uh, there's a whole bunch of options. I won't go too in depth here. Uh, you can see this in the screenshots, but you can pick different fonts. Uh, you can change your font size for your header and for all your stuff. And uh, yeah, you can also change your spacer gap. So if you don't want that space there, you can get rid of that or you can make it bigger. You, know, you can set your rows to be taller. Uh, your headers can be taller or shorter or non existent uh, if you turn some things down. Uh, we've got text color, uh, edge color background color and we also have this for the label and the body so just to kind of show you the main sections here uh, that's kind of what it looks like uh, you can't see this my mouse is over a color picker right now it's the touch designer color picker uh, just FYI but you can see what's going on uh, close enough so uh, all right so how do you implement this into your scene uh, I guess is the next question you might have well, if we go to the input tab over here and we look at this, this is all that you need to uh, concern yourself with in terms of implementation. Essentially, uh, this field should contain a space separated list of all the objects that you want to affect. And the first object in that list will be the object that you are sourcing. So uh, to kind of give you an example, uh, I've got uh, I've got this this cube, right, which is Geo3. As we can see, I'm, all I'm doing is sending out a string from uh, the scene, which has got a space separated list of all these paths. Uh, so you can generate that however you want, but essentially this dat execute is just writing that string into uh, this source field. And so because I only have one object in here, it is both the source and the destination operator, right? So what that means is uh, when I change values, uh, both the object's parameter value and the uh, actual UI's display value is changing. But if I have to select two objects, let's actually do this a little bit differently. Let's select the light first. And then we'll select the cube. As you can see, we have the light space, the cube. And over here, uh, it's set up the same way. We have the light space, the cube. Uh, so what that means is our UI is based off of the first item, but then we're going to be updating every single item in this list when we change values. So. Uh, that's a very straightforward way of implementing it. You just have to pretty much uh, get this information from your scene. Or if this isn't going to update in real time, it's just going to be UI for one object. You can just type it in there and forget about it, and it'll be good to go. Uh, force refresh is just that. It just pretty much triggers a refresh of the UI in case you, uh, I don't know, you run into a situation where you need to do that. Uh, Number of rows, this is an important variable. Uh, so let's go in here real quick. Uh, so this is a replicated network fed by this empty table. And this empty table is going to be uh, sourcing this variable, right? So uh, if we have a, a bunch of objects in our network and they range from 10 to 30 custom parameters each, uh, then okay, maybe we want to have this set to 35, uh, something close to the max, but just with a little bit of breathing room. Uh, I, I just tend to set this higher than I'm going to need it, and then we're good to go. So, if you have an object with 40 custom parameters uh, and uh, a few page names and a few gaps, you may actually run out of of custom parameters, so you may have to increase this value. So. Uh, lower it as much as you can, but then, yeah, go as high as you need to to accommodate your, your setup. So, uh, that's pretty much it on the back end. Just to show you what this scene looks like, it's very simple. These objects all just have custom parameters, right? Uh, 
like this translate XYZ is just being fed into my actual XYZ. Um, I do this, I pass all of my all of my variables through custom parameters so that there's a, a consistent window into uh, that object. And since I use Uber GUI for all of my work internally as well, uh, this just makes it simple and consistent across all of my all of my objects. So uh, there are there are tools that pretty much allow you to uh, interact with custom parameters that you can't really do with parameters, uh, and vice versa. So uh, that's why. So, anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for this walkthrough. Thanks for watching. If you have uh, any questions, shoot me a comment below or just uh, drop me a message. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any extra thoughts or future requests as well. Uh, thanks for watching.